quick maha mantra hari krishna hari krishna 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 hari 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 ram hari ram 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 hari hari hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hari ram 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 hari hari check check Think how much advancement the spiders up there are making, being in Bhagavatam class. See all the webs? There must be spiders there, so they must be making advancement. The next life they'll come back and give class. Yeah, the story, Charlotte's Web. Yeah, it's pretty profound. It's all about life and death. Yeah, the story, Charlotte's Web, you're in. Yeah, it's about the spider and then the fact that, you know, at the end of the season, he's going to die. She's going to die. The spider's going to, Wilbur's a pig, and all about, you know, the farm and then uh, how death comes. It's pretty profound, the message there on the, on the web, you know, like, Hare Krishna, time to go. What is this? Uh, it's actually a very profound for kids. It's, like, it's a kid's book, but it's actually, you know, about birth and death. Nothing's eternal. Uh, actually, the, the spiders save the pig's life or something from being, from being slaughtered, right? Because there's some message on the web like, you know, save the pig or something like that. Yeah. Hmm? There's a little, little pig and they're all friends and interesting. It made me think of it, the web's up there. It says up there, who let him give class? Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari do you have a brass section? Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Vardhari Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Vardhari Asura Nandana Braja Janaranjano Jasura Nandana Braja Janaranjano Jamunatira Banachari Jamuna Tira Vanajari Jayo Radha Madhava Kunjaviyadi Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Ramadava Kunja Vihari Gopi Janna Ballapa Giri Vardhari Gopi Janna Ballapa Giri Vardhari Sura Nandana Brajajana Ranjana 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 Sura Nandana Braj
Yasuranandana Brajadana Ranjana Jasura Nandana Braja Janaranjana Jamuna Tira Banachari Jamuna Tira Banachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabiyadi Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabihari Madhava Kunjabihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabihari Madhava Kunjabihari Sisi Radha Madhava Ki Sisi Radha Giridhari Ki Gaura Vrimanandi Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramhamsa Paribraja Kachaj Ashwadara Sisi Maad is Divine Grace. Abhai Charanara Vinda Bhakti Vedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Garantara Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai Samveda Bhakti Vedanta Ki Jai Gaura Paribhanandi All glory is to the assembled devotees 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 This is the verse. Okay. So today we're reading from the third canto, thirty second chapter, text twenty six. With your permission. Thank you. Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya. Narayanam namaskrijam naram chayva narotamam devim saraswatim vyasam tatojam odiriyat shira prabhupada ki jai Jnana mataram param brahma Paramatmeshwara puman Drishyadi vi prithag bhavayar Bhagavane ka iyate Jnana Matram Pram Brahma Paramat Meshwara Puman Drishyadi Bhi Pritang Bhavayar Bhagavan Ekaiyate Jnana Matram Pram Brahma Paramat Meshwara Puman Drishyadi vi pritang bhavair Bhagavan eka iyate Please chant Yanamatram Bram Brahma Paramatmeshwara Puman Drishadi Vi Pritam Baba Nayade Yanamatram Bram Brahma Paramatmeshwara Puman 
Prashadivi Pradang Bhavayar Morgane Gaiyate Anyone else? Anamatara Brahm Brahma Paramatveshwara Puman Trajari Bi Pradag Bhavir Bhavane Gaiyate Jnana Knowledge Matram Only Param Transcendental Brahma Brahman Paramatma Paramatma Ishvara The Controller Puman Super Soul Drishi Adivihi By Philosophical Research and Other Processes Pritak Bhavahai According to Different Processes of Understanding Bhagavan the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Ekaha, alone, iyate, is perceived. Translation and purport by Srila Prabhupada. The Supreme Personality of Godhead alone is complete transcendental knowledge. But according to the different processes of understanding, he appears differently. Either by impersonal Brahman as Paramatma, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, or as the Purusha Avatar. <clears throat> Please repeat, the Supreme Personality of Godhead alone is complete transcendental knowledge. But according to the different processes of understanding, he appears differently, either as impersonal Brahman, as Paramatma, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead or as the Purusha Avatar. Excuse me. Purport. The word Drishyadi Bihi is significant. According to Jiva Goswami, Drishi means jnana, philosophical research. By different processes of philosophical research under different concepts, such as the process of Jnana Yoga, the same Bhagavan or Supreme Personality of Godhead is understood as impersonal Brahman. Similarly, by the Eightfold Yoga system, he appears as the Paramatma. But in pure Krishna consciousness or knowledge and purity, when one tries to understand the Absolute Truth, one realizes him as a Supreme Person. The transcendence is realized simply on the basis of knowledge. The words used here, param, uh, Paramatmeshwara Puman, are all transcendental and they refer to Supersoul. Supersoul is also described as Purusha, but the word Bhagavan directly refers to the Supreme Personality of Godhead who is full of six opulences, wealth, fame, strength, beauty, knowledge, and renunciation. He is the Personality of Godhead in different spiritual skies. The various descriptions of Paramatma, Ishwara, and Puman indicate that the expansions of the Supreme Godhead are unlimited. Ultimately, to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one has to accept Bhakti Yoga. By executing Jnana Yoga or Dhyana Yoga, one has to eventually approach the Bhakti Yoga platform. And then, Paramatma, Ishwara, Puman, etc. are all clearly understood. It is recommended in the second canto of the Shema Bhagavatam that whether one is a devotee or a fruit of actor or a liberationist, oops, lost my place here. He is, if he is intelligent enough, he should engage himself with all seriousness in the process of devotional service. It is also explained that whatever one desires, which is obtainable by fruit of activities, even if one wants to be elevated to the higher planets, can be achieved simply by execution of devotional service. Since the Supreme Lord is full in six opulences, he can bestow any one of them upon the worshiper. The one Supreme Personality of Godhead reveals himself to different thinkers as the Supreme Person or Impersonal Brahman or Paramatma. Impersonalists merge into the Impersonal Brahman, but that is not achieved by worshiping the Impersonal Brahman. If one takes to devotional service and at the same time desires to merge into the existence of the Supreme Lord, he can achieve that. 
If someone desires at all to merge into the existence of the Supreme, he has to execute devotional service. The devotee can see the Supreme Lord face to face, but the jnani, the empiric philosopher or yogi, cannot. They cannot be elevated to the positions of associates of the Lord. There is no evidence in the scriptures stating that by cultivating knowledge or worshipping the impersonal Brahman, one can become a personal associate of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Nor by executing the yogic principles can one become an associate of the Supreme Godhead. Impersonal Brahman, being formless, is described as Adrishya, because the impersonal effulgence of Brahma Jyoti covers the face of the Supreme Lord. Some yogis see the four-handed Vishnu sitting within the heart, and therefore, in their case, also the Supreme Lord is invisible. Only for the devotees is the Lord visible. Here the statement, Drishyadi Bihi, is significant since the Supreme Personality of God it is both invisible and visible. There are different features of the Lord. The Paramatma feature and Brahman feature are invisible, but the Bhagavan feature is visible. In the Vishnu Purana, this fact is very nicely explained. The universal form of the Lord and the formless Brahman effulgence of the Lord being invisible are inferior features. The concept of the universal form is material and the concept of impersonal Brahman is spiritual, but the highest spiritual understanding is the personality of Godhead. The Vishnu Purana states, Vishnur Brahma Surupena Swayameva Vivastitaha. Brahman's real feature is Vishnu, or the Supreme Brahman is Vishnu, Swayam Eva, and that is his personal feature. The Supreme Spiritual Conception is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It is also confirmed in Bhagavad Gita, Yad Gadva Nadivartante Dadhama Paramamama, 15 chapter 6 verse. That specific abode called param, uh, Paramamama is the place from which one, once one attains it, one does not return to this miserable conditional life. Every place, every space, and everything belongs to Vishnu, but where he personally lives is Taddhama Paramam, the supreme abode. One has to make one's destination the supreme abode of the Lord. salakaya <laughs> Chaksulun minitam dena taisma isri guru vena maha. Sikishna chaitanya brabu nitan and the shia doi tigarada harishiva sitting go or back to Brinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Excuse me. In the beginning, this first part of the purport really comes to mind that verse in the beginning of the Bhagavatam about uh, Brahmeti, Paramatmeti, Bhagavan Iti, Shabdyate. And that begins talking about learned persons. How does it begin? Uh, Vidanti Tat, those who are knowers of the truth. They say that one truth, but well, there's some variety there. It's all one, but there's one truth, there's variety, where the absolute truth is realized in three different features, Brahman. Paramatma and Bhagavan. And that's what they're saying. So it's interesting, the impersonalists, they say everything is one, uh, but we also accept that, but the point is we say one, but with variety. Just let's saw a little video clip of uh, uh, come to me who it was, Maharaj, but he was giving the example like earth is one, but in that earth you grow vegetables. So if you think it's all one, eat the dirt, right? There's, ver there's variety. There's variety. Why do we say that there's no variety in, in spiritual, in the spiritual dimension? It, why is it said? We don't say it. I'm just saying, why, why, why did they even say that? Where did they get that idea? It's actually a concoction. It's a concoction like that. So... Um, and what's being brought up here is according to, a, there's one, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is complete, but according to the different processes of understanding, he appears differently. So, uh, another example given like a mountain, depending on where you are, what side of the mountain you're on. Just like this Coles Mountain out here, it's the highest mountain you can say in San Diego City. 
Going down. But if you're on this side and look at it, it looks one way. If you're in Santee and look at it, it looks differently. It looks like a different, kind of different. And if you're uh, at the base of it, what they call that staging area where you start hiking, like trailhead, it looks different. If you're on top, it looks different. But it's all the same hill. It's all the same hill. So people argue, no, no, this is impersonal, that's the goal, Paramatma is the goal, Bhagavan. We know actually Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is the ultimate conclusion. But according to the different uh, processes of knowledge or different understandings, we see things differently. Now Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita uh, uh, that there are different varieties of knowledge according to the modes of material nature and different kinds of understanding. So I'll just want to read those verses because it's true. According to a person's position, they will understand things like that. So I have to take that into account. Uh, so let's just skip ahead here to, this is in the, you know chapter that's in where Krishna says there's three kinds of knowledge and three kinds of understanding according to the modes of nature? 17, do I hear an 18? Do I hear an 18? 18, okay, 18 chapter. It begins in the 17th chapter about the different varieties of things like food, but in the 18th chapter here, he continues that. So I just, uh, because knowledge is there, we're talking about knowledge, but he's saying, but just listen to uh, how that knowledge is, is filtered through the modes of material nature. It's all knowledge, but it's, it's different, what the, what the perception is. So Krishna says, according to the three modes of material nature, there are three kinds of knowledge, action and the perform of action. Now hear them from me. So the first one is uh, the mode of goodness. Is class over? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, that knowledge by which one undivided spiritual nature is seen in all living entities, all, uh, though they are divided into innumerable forms, you should know, uh, you should understand to be in the mode of goodness. So in the mode of goodness, one sees the undivided spiritual nature in all forms of life. That knowledge by which one sees that in every different body there is a different type of living entity, you should understand to be. Uh, you should understand to be in the mode of passion. In other words, this is a human being. That's a dog. That's a cat. That's a banana tree. That's a blade of grass. That's a fish. That's a. They're different. Right? So here, Nandamaj tells a story that he was preaching in some, one of the countries in South America, and, and, and uh, well, a uh, famous kind of couple came, and the woman was talking about how she was a, a woman soul. And she said, I believe in the soul. I'm a woman's soul. My husband's a man's soul. Like that. And no matter what he said, she couldn't accept. No, there's a woman's soul and a man's soul. Like that. So that's mode of passion when you make that differentiation according to the body. And then what do we have? And what's knowledge and the mode of ignorance? There's actually knowledge and the mode of ignorance. And that knowledge by which one is attached to one kind of work as the all in all without knowledge of the truth which is very meager, is said to be the mode of darkness. So in other words, hmm? meager, very tiny, small, nothing much there, very meager. Like that. It's just the opposite of the amount of pancakes that Janarin's making right now in the kitchen. Okay, Meager would be he brought us one pancake to divide amongst all of us. That would be a meager amount of pancakes. But no, he makes a mountain. So... So in other words, knowledge and ignorance is, it says here, all you do is really think about what you do all day long, your work or something like that. No, no inquiry into the truth. It's just, this is my life. Like that. There's a few other, I just want to read this though about a, so, uh, under, it says one is attached to one kind of work as the all in all. That's everything. Just, you know, that. And I just want to read here, because he talks about understanding. Here it is. O son of Prita, that understanding by which one knows what ought to be done and what not ought to be done, what is to be feared and what is not to be feared, what is binding and what is liberating is in the mode of goodness. That's, un that's under the type of understanding. But there's another type of understanding in, pa in passion, O son of Prita, that understanding which cannot distinguish between religion and irreligion, between action that should be done and action that should not be done, 
is in the mode of passion. Right? There are some people you say, oh, this shouldn't be done. I can understand that. I'll do whatever I want to do. You do what you do, I do what I do. And who are you to tell me? Yeah. And at last it says, that understanding which considers, considers irreligion to be religion and religion to be irreligion under the spell of illusion and darkness and strives always in the wrong direction. O Parta is in the mode of ignorance. So it would be very, very careful that we have the proper understanding. And then whoever is in charge has proper understanding too. You just see. Yes. Like that. So it's very, very dangerous if one is not, you can see, if one's knowledge and understanding is in the lower modes of nature, uh, that's how they're seeing things. So according to a person's position and the type of knowledge or understanding they're cultivating, oh my goodness, where am I? Close. There we go. That's what they're going to see. That's what you get. So that's very, very important. It's not only the object of perception, but the perceiver. Now, Prabhupada uh, quotes this, uh, or refers to this uh, very famous verse in the second canto of the Bhagavatam. This akama sarvakamo va moksha kamo dharadi tivrena bhakti yogena yajate purusham param, right? Param, purusham param. That, uh, as he's saying here, whatever you want, whatever your goal may be, it is, it is necessary, not just recommended, but necessary to engage in devotional service. So akama, so when it was, what does kama mean? Hmm? Material desire, lust, material desire. You, you want something in this material world. You want to enjoy in this material world. Ah, kama. So if you don't, ah means not. So if you have no desire, enjoy in this material world. Ah, kama. How about sarva kama? You know any sarva karmis? Kamis? Like that? You want to enjoy everything, right? You're full of, full of sarva means all. I've got all kinds of desires. Let me show you the list, right? So ah, kama. This is interesting too because it's it's applying to everyone. Akama, Savakama, Moksha Kama, you want liberation. You want to get out of all this trouble. Udadadi. Now one Udada means one who has some very intelligent, broad intelligence, thoughtful. What do they do? They take up the process of very intense Tivrena means like the rays of the sun, Tivrena, devotional service to achieve perfection. Because everything ultimately is based upon the mercy and kindness and the uh, Krishna giving the benediction. He's in the heart. It's very, very personal. It's not that uh, the material world uh, life is working on some kind of, you could say, mechanical arrangement. You know, so it's very popular now to say the universe, right? The universe has given me this or give me that. Put it out to the universe and the universe will respond. Well, what does that mean? Like some asteroid out there or something? Or what's responding when you say the universe, right? Just like say you have a trouble with, what, what's the uh, uh, Wi-Fi carrier here at the temple? Who is it? Cox or AT&T, do you know? Hmm? So we're on Time Warner, right? So you got a problem with the Wi-Fi. So I'm going to call Time Warner. Time Warner, is, well, who's Time, what's that mean? There's a person there, if you're lucky, Right? There's a person there, if you're lucky, that's who's going to fix it and come out here. When you say, oh, Time Warner, I'm going to call it. That's a big, huge corporation. It's a person you're talking about. So uh, this idea that uh, just you put it out into the universe, your thoughts and so on, and the universe will respond. Now, it's a person. That's what we're saying. There's a Krishna's there. He's in everyone's heart. He's the one responding. Whatever you want. That's just saying, he can, he's, he's, he's Bhagavan, all opulences, whatever you want, in this world or outside of this world, it's, Krishna is the one who's going to give it to you. If you want to merge into his bodily effulgence, right? You gotta go, he's the one who's going to say, come on in, right? If you want to realize, if you're a yogi, you want to realize a paramatma in the heart, he's the one who reveals himself, Right? He has to reveal himself as Paramatma. And if you want to go back to Goloka Vrindavan, the spiritual world, he's got to reveal that and take us there. Krishna's the one. He's reciprocating with every living entity. As in Bhagavad Gita, what is that? Yeyata mampa bhajante tamsta taiva bhajam yaham. 
This is what Krishna is doing. He's reciprocating with every single living entity according to their desires. That's what he does. Every single, every single living entity according to their desires, he's reciprocating. So what does that mean about whatever position we're in? Krishna is just reciprocating. That's all he's doing. He's reciprocating with every single living entity like that. Uh, he's, he's there to facilitate. You want to enjoy in this way and that way. He gives his, uh, he gives his uh, good instruction, right? Bhagavad Gita and so on. He gives so much good instruction, but the living entity uh, insists, I want to enjoy in this particular way. Krishna says, okay, try it. Like that. Okay, go ahead. So this verse there, uh, uh, Krishna's making that point. These different varieties or processes of understanding and knowledge are there according to the living entity's desires and understandings. So not everyone's going to be on the same platform. We shouldn't try to put everyone into the same mold. Uh, due to people's previous activities in karma, they have a certain, we all have a certain amount we can understand, right? We only have a certain amount we can understand. Or people have, due to their past karma, certain uh, goals they want to achieve. So uh, preachers have to understand this also. Someone uh, comes in the front door, uh, you have to be very careful what you say. You may say too much. This is too much for them. Find out where they're at and preach accordingly and help them move beyond that, but very carefully. That, so and That's why the Vedic knowledge is there and the Vedas are d divided into different categories, right? You have Karma Kanda, which makes up most of the Vedas. It's actually Karma Kanda. How to enjoy in this material world? Properly. And, wh and what happens if you do it improperly? That's there, so you've got to avoid it, right? Jiganya guna brittista ado kanchanti tamasa, you go down. Like that. And then another section which is a little bit smaller, that's jnana, the jnana marg, like that, one who's frustrated in the material world, cultivating knowledge that there's some spiritual. And then there's a very really small section, that's uh, us guys, that's the bhakti yogis, like that. Not very many people understand and can appreciate because it, it requires, you could say punya, and what it really requires is the mercy of, of the pure devotees, the mercy of the Vaishnavas, like that. But if Vaishnavas are always merciful, they're not saying, okay, there's a hundred people, I'm only going to give my mercy to one. They give the mercy to everyone, so, but there has to be some ability to receive the mercy and appreciate the mercy of the Vaishnavas. But uh, that's how one, that's what our um, uh, advancement along the path of devotional service is dependent upon, the kindness and mercy of the Lord's devotees. That's how he extends himself into this material world for us. And then, so uh, devotees always praying for uh, the mercy and the knowledge and revelation, right? Just like what about the, the one of the excellences of the chanting of the holy names, Cheto Darpa Namarjanam Bhava Maha Devagni Navapanam Shaya Karayava Chandrikam Vitara Vidya Vadu Jivanam, right? The, uh, the transcendental knowledge, opening of, of, of that vision of, is there from the chanting. It comes. It comes. It's included. It's in the package. Like that. It's in the package. Right? So the heart becomes cleansed. The mirror of the mind becomes cleansed. Right? That. The uh, fire of material existence becomes extinguished. All these different benedictions are there. But vidyavadu jivanam. Like that. So that's, uh, that's there. And, uh, and uh, that's our process. And we don't, uh, that, that is the, you can say the process. How will we actually get the vision of, 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 of advanced devotees? How will that come? What are we banking on? No, how, how, do, we, no, how do we make that, how do we come to that position? What's, what's, what's our process? Pleasing them and the chanting, right? In fact, isn't there a verse in the Chaitanya, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says in the Kali Yuga, there's, Real religion is chanting the holy names and the association of Vaishnavas. Isn't there a verse like that? Does that ring a bell? Those are, that, that, that's what constitutes religion in Kali Yuga. Right? Association with devotees and chanting the holy names. Now, association means serving, 
serving the devotees and then chanting the holy names in the association of devotees. And everything will come from that. So our life is molded in such a way. That's, this is here, uh, but according to different processes of understanding. So that's our process. What's our process? Right? Harinama, Harinama, Harinami, Vikivalam, Kalo, Nasteva, 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 Gatiranyata. That's our process. That's it. You know, sometimes, uh, I just heard recently, you know, people would argue with Prabhupada. And the Prabhupada would say, this is all I have. Right? This is all I have. The chanting. He couldn't get through to someone. And he would just say, this is, this is what I have. The chanting of the holy names. Like that. So recently, some one person said to Prabhupada, some hippie or something like that, he said, I, I'm more advanced than you. You know what Prabhupada said? He said, please have my humble obeisances. And Brahmananda grabbed the guy and threw him out. <laughs> threw him out. <laughs> Picked him up and threw him out. And Prabhupada said, well, we should not allow so many more crazies in here. Prabhupada said something like that. Prabhupada said, please have my obeisances. Please have my humble obeisances. But uh, sometimes probably they say, oh, but Prabhupada, Prabhupada said, this is all I have. This, this is what I have. The chanting of the Holy, pure chanting of Krishna's names. That's the process we're giving. And uh, there's a, there, there's a, uh, the conclusion of that, or the goal of that, is realizing Krishna, the Absolute Truth, Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the source of the impersonal Brahman, Brahman Yohi Patishtaham, Krishna says, and he's also the Paramatma, Ishvara Sarvabhutanam Hridesha Junatishtati. So when you realize Krishna, you realize all these other, this is, this is somewhere in the purport has said that. Uh, when you realize Krishna, when you understand Krishna, you understand all of these other aspects of the Absolute Truth. Everything is understood and complete like that. So... Uh, this drisha adi bihi, all these varieties of, and so on. So we're very fortunate because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has uh, honed, or what do you want to say, the whole process of Vedic knowledge and everything right down to a very, very simple, sublime process in the age of Kali, because that's what we need. Like that. We're, we're, we're uh, uh, very much disqualified and uh, we need something. Just like sometimes if you're a teacher, you have a student who's not so bright, right? But you've got to pass them. So you adjust some things so they can, like that, at least just squeak by, like that, because they're, they're not so bright. So, uh, what does it say? The few, you look at someone, you can tell a few of the lights are out upstairs. They say, we're not so bright in Kali Yuga. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here, right? We're not so bright. So, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is given a process for those who aren't so bright. Like that. And that's the chanting of the Holy Name. Very, very kind and merciful. Just take it. Just take it. That's, that's the avatar in the age of Kali. Like that. Because Krishna's purpose is to deliver all the fallen souls. So in the age of Kali, he's got to give a process that works for the age of Kali. And that's the chanting of the Holy Names. Chanting, chanting, chanting. Like that. So sitting with devotees and preaching Krishna consciousness. So that's our process of understanding. And uh, throughout all of our literatures, it explains what our rel realization is. We're not going to, you're not going to chant Hare Krishna, the, oh, Brahman, oh, yes. Is anyone ask, expecting that? I'm going to chant Hare Krishna, and I'm going to realize Brahman, how I'm just a spiritual energy. That's like distasteful, right? Or I'm going to chant Hare Krishna, and I'll, I'll see Paramatma in my heart. No, that's not our goal. That's not, a, that's not the revelation given to us by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, by our spiritual masters, by our, our literatures. It's, it's Krishna, it's, right? It's being with Krishna, being with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That's our goal. The Prabhupada says the very end of the purport, the very last line is that's where we should be going. Uh, he's saying here that should be, one has to make one's destination the supreme abode of the Lord because going there, one doesn't come back. There's a verse in the Bhagavatam about if you go to Brahman, you can fall, but you will fall back down. Aruya kachena param padam, because you don't take shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord, you come back. And the, and the danger of uh, this realizing paramatma in the heart, if one, if one doesn't progress pa past that, sometimes one thinks the paramatma is himself. Or one becomes very much bewildered by all the yogic perfections. On that, on that, that's Maya's trick for the yogi. You're working on the yoga, and by doing that, it's a very intense process. A lot of austerities and so on, you become very, very powerful in many different ways, and you get distracted. Can you imagine if uh, 
That was part of our process too. By chanting Hare Krishna, all of a sudden you become lighter than the lightest, smaller than the smallest. You can create a universe. You, how many people would stick around and say, whoa, I was at the Hare Krishna temple for two years. Now I can just levitate or I can, I can, I can just grab something from the bank, like a bag of money, right? Probably get a lot of people joining, but not a lot of people staying, right? We probably get, some, get in trouble too. Uh, so it's, that's what the yogis happens to them. So uh, I'm over time. I'm sorry. So uh, any questions or comments? Yes. No, Hridayananda Maharaj. Hridayananda Maharaj. No, that's a good question. That's a good question about, you know, uh, about the uh, the Hridayananda Maharaj preaching to someone, and the woman kept saying she's a woman soul, a woman soul. So, how about our identities in the spiritual world, male and female, this and the other thing? So, yes, we have an eternal identity, that's for sure. But she wasn't referring to that. She was thinking, I am this woman soul, you know. She was a movie star. Or I don't know what she was, but that's who I am. I'm a woman, so therefore I have a woman. I'm a woman's soul. You're a man. You're a man's soul. That's a dog. That's a dog's soul. And that's what was said here. You see the different species of life, and you're thinking it. And that's where they go. How in the world could you come back as a dog? No, it's impossible. These crazy Hindus. They think you know I'm a human being, and I'll be a dog in my next life, or a cat. They can't conceive of that because of the understanding, knowledge, and the mode of passion. I am a human being. That's a dog. Never the twain shall meet. In other words, no, no understanding. These are like clothing. Just like one day, you may put on saffron. Right? You'll, you're not Mr. White Man. You may, you'll become Mr. Saffron Man. But neither of those are true. You're, just, you're the same person, but your clothes change. Prabhu, you had a question or comment? I brought up some things. Yes.
It's exactly what Rajendra Kumar, Rajendra Nandan Prabhu just said. So we said that all Paramahamsas have all the powers, but if they display them or not, they're intentionally hiding them or displaying them. Yeah, that's what I've read. It's my understanding. And also, the prophet said about Jesus Christ, one of the mistakes he made was all of his miracles. Because then people define religion as, oh, you have to be a miracle worker. And then they ask Prabhupada. Prabhupada said, sometimes they'd ask him, Swamiji, what's your miracle? Right? And then Prabhupada would say, all his disciples, right? He's taken hippies and made them into happies, and, you know, malechas and yavadas. And that's the miracle. But this idea of I touch someone and uh, I cure them of leprosy or I touch someone and, and they, or give them some gold or this or that, that's the qualification for spirituality that I, I'm, you know, I'm a doctor. I can cure someone's disease or so well, that's to be careful. And that's a big thing, you know, it's a big thing. I don't pick on Christianity, but these big, big, you know, revivals and all that and people come down on crutches and then the spirit enters them and then they throw the crutches away. And, and that's proof, you know, that's proof that that's the real religion because someone threw their crutches away. Like that. So you have to be careful how we, you know, we prove, you know, the existence of God. I'll, I'll tell you a story I just heard. It just shows how uh, neophyte thinking there can be. Uh, it had to do with, the, there's an island off Mexico called Cozumel. And the Mayans were there, and they had a big temple, small temple, actually. It's actually a very peaceful place. It was a temple to uh, Parvati, or Uma, goddess of fertility, and so on. But anyways, Cortez, you've heard of Cortez, right? Quite a nefarious character. But before he moved in on the Aztecs, he was there, and he had two priests with him. And of course, you know what the priests were there for, to save the people of the, of the New World. One was quite fanatical and one was actually quite level-headed, you know, so it kept him under control instead of doing something really crazy. But what happened was they um, spoke to the head priest there, the Mayan priest, about how powerful Jesus was and the God of Christianity. And they said, well, <clears throat> uh, our gods are more powerful. Like that. And then Cortez said, well, let's just do this. Let's make a test, Okay. So they went into the temple, they took their deities, which is like the sun and the moon and this and that, off the altar and put Mother Mary there and Jesus Christ and had a mass. And nothing happened. So Cortez said, that proves that our God's more strong than your God because nothing happened. So the Mayans said, I guess you're right. We should be Christians. So why didn't they go, well, let's go into your church take Mother Mary off the altar and put a little deity of, uh, you know, Surya and Chandra and see if lightning, they, they said, if you do that, you know, the skies are going to open and lightning and thunder and it was going to be, but nothing happened. So, you know, it's amazing that uh, what people's understanding of how they prove the existence of God or something like that, it's like, we have to be a little more thoughtful. Like that, so we can end here. All glories to Srila Prabhupada.
Three hugs. This is the Holy Festival. Well, if you go there, there's colors, mantra music, yoga, meals, and free hugs. Kids are free. So if you need a kid, the kids are free there. They're giving out free kids. <laughs> kids are free. It says here, kids are free. <laughs> and, uh, Okay. As long as you're 18 or older, we'll take them, right? Three kids. Okay.
Get on 